Have you ever wondered how the earliest humans survived winter? Imagine waking up and your breath turns to frost. No jacket, no heater, no hot food. Just a stone shelter and the freezing wind of the Ice Age. So here's the question. How did early humans survive this? Because scientists agree, ancient winters were some of the coldest periods in Earth's history. And yet, humans didn't disappear. They adapted. They endured. They learned how to outsmart the cold in the most surprising ways. And the truth is, their first method of survival had nothing to do with fire. Before fire, humans had one tool, each other. They huddled close at night, not for comfort, but to stay alive. Children in the center, adults on the outside. They lined caves with dry leaves and grass and wrapped animal hides around their bodies even before stitching existed. Some experts believe early humans may have entered a slowed state, like a natural winter mode, resting longer, moving less. Could that be possible? Maybe. But once they learned how to make fire, everything changed. Fire wasn't just heat, it was power. They built fires near cave walls to reflect warmth. They cooked meat, softened hides, dried wet clothing. They even carried embers between shelters. Some even used burned bones and ash to seal cold air out. Others created smoke pits to cure animal skins. They were experimenting and turning survival into skill. But they still needed something else, a way to face the coldest storms head on. And for that, they turned to giants. When a mammoth was brought down, it wasn't just dinner, it was gear. Thick fur became insulation, hides were scraped and stretched with stone tools, animal fat was used as a water repellent, even tendons were turned into cords, long before thread was invented. And what's truly fascinating, different human groups around the world came up with similar solutions, independently. Was it instinct, or something deeper, passed through generations? But staying warm wasn't just about tools, it was about mindset. Today, we avoid discomfort, but back then, cold was life. Children learned to walk barefoot in snow, to handle freezing water, to control their breath and body heat. These breath control methods, they resemble techniques used by modern athletes today, which means survival was mental too. But tools and breath weren't enough. They still needed shelter, and they got creative with what nature gave them. Not every tribe lived in a cave. Some built homes using mammoth bones. They created frames, covered them in hides, insulated them with snow. Snow blocked wind, trapped warmth, and turned ice into shelter. These homes had fire pits, smoke holes, storage areas, and even security systems, like bone piles arranged to detect movement. But here's another challenge. What did they eat when the world was frozen? Fat. That was their fuel. They ate bone marrow, organ meat, fat-rich cuts. They melted snow for water, and sometimes buried food to keep it fresh, like natural freezers. When hunting failed, they turned to bark, plants, insects. Every bite had purpose to help the body generate heat. But even more important than food was each other. No one survived alone. Everyone had a role. One watched for storms. One kept the fire going. Another kept an eye out for predators. Sometimes, even rival groups would come together just to share shelter from a brutal freeze. Because cooperation was the ultimate survival skill. And scientists think this is where empathy may have started. Not from kindness, but from shared need. But the cold didn't just test humans, it shaped them. Cold shaped our bodies, our breath, even our voices. Fossil skulls show that our throats and mouths evolved to handle cold, dry air. And around the fire, people talked told stories, 
passed on knowledge, that storytelling became memory, memory became language, and language became legacy. The cold didn't destroy humanity, it defined it. So the next time you feel winter's chill, remember this. Your ancestors stood in the snow, with no coat, no fire, and nothing but their minds, each other, and the will to survive. And from that cold came the warmth of everything we are today.